Hello everyone, my name is Hisham Galal. I am a PhD student with my supervisor Amr Youssef at Concordia University. I'm very glad to present this work. It's about um, publicly verifiable and secrecy preserving periodic auctions. So here's the agenda for my talk, uh, starting with introduction and a brief uh, overview over the cryptographic primitives and tools that I'm going to use in the periodic auction protocol, followed by the protocol itself and eventually conclusions. So to start the introduction, I'd like to talk first about exchange. And exchange is considered a continuous double-sided auction where we have uh, bidders against uh, sellers or buyers against sellers. So that's why it's called double-sided. And it's continuous because it match, uh, whenever there are two matching uh, orders, they are, settled, they are settled immediately. And in this type of uh, auctions, we have an order book where investors uh, submit uh, their orders. And the orders have two types, either limit order or market order. So the limit order consists of a unit price, a quantity, and a direction. And these limit orders are listed on the order book. Another type, it's known as market order. It doesn't include a unit price. So market orders are um, settled immediately with the top uh, opposing uh, or with the top opposite uh, order. So if it's a buy order, a buy market order, then it will be settled or and matched with the highest um, sell order on the order book. This image was taken from uh, BitMEX, uh, Bitcoin exit change last year when the price was actually around uh, 11,000. 11, what I'd like to talk about here is that when the orders on both, on both sides are relatively close, then the market price doesn't change significantly. It moves slowly. But when one of the orders on, on one side is very large compared to the opposing orders, like in this example, we have a large buy order, for, uh, uh, which is uh, around, let's say, 4 million. And the top opposing uh, sell order is, one, is 100,000. So there is huge difference between both. Now, what happens in this case is that sellers will actually either modify or cancel their orders and move them to higher prices because they anticipate that the price will move forward and they do so to gain more profits. But here we have a problem for the owner of this large order. Actually, he, will have, he or she will have a very hard time trying to uh, fill uh, his or her order. So to get around this problem or to counter it, an institutional uh, investor or financial investors uh, don't utilize auctions or exchanges with uh, a, a lit order book or visible order book. And that's why they utilize dark pools. So in the dark pools, the order book is hidden from traders. And now no trader can learn whether there is a large order or not. So they cannot modify their orders uh, after anticipating large uh, order coming. So this is good for uh, institutional investors because they don't have to worry about the market impact of their large volume order. But actually, it's unfair for the traders who trade on uh, lit markets where the order book is visible because they don't have price discovery, uh, a real and fair price discovery. And that's why several regulations have called for um, limiting the trades on dark pools, such as MIFID2. And the consequences of such a regulation is to improve uh, price discovery and increase the trading on lit markets. 
However, institutional investors are once again at a disadvantage. And here is um, the moment where periodic auctions have gained more popularity. So as we can see here, post the regulation of MIFID2, the periodic auctions have become more popular because they share some properties with dark pools, such as hiding the order book, while they provide more price discovery tools and more uh, fair price. So the main properties of periodic auctions, they execute or settle trades periodically during the day rather than continuously. So it's like we have intervals of trades. And the order book is hidden, similarly to how it works on dark pools. The periodic auction starts with bidding phase where traders send their orders to the operator. Then once this bidding phase is over, the operator matches order to find the market clearing price for MCP. After finding the MCP, the operator can settle matched orders based on this price. So all matched orders will be settled on a uniform price known as MCP. The objective of our research is to design a periodic auction protocol, which is resilient to front running, even against the operator, it's, uh, her or himself. And we want to ensure that the MCP is correctly computed and also provide public verifiability. So um, to start the uh, section of cryptographic background, I'm here talking about the primitives that I'm going to use in, uh, in the design of periodic auction protocol and starting with the Peterson commitments and El Gamal encryption. So Peterson commitments are homomorphic uh, uh, commitments and we have uh, commit and verify algorithms. And for LGML encryption, it's also homomorphic encryption. And here we have a uh, key gen algorithm and encryption and decryption by a secret key of X. The, uh, more, the main important uh, primitive that I'm going to use is the zero notch range proof. And in here, I'm going to use pilot proofs. So pilot proofs allows us to generate a range proof on a Peterson commitment that the underlying value, let's say X, is within a certain range, like from zero to two to the power N minus one. And here we have a setup which produces or generates public parameters. And also we have two algorithms proof which takes the commitment and the opening values of these commitments, along with the public parameters to produce a proof. And we have a verify algorithm which takes the public parameters, the commitment and the proof and it will either accept or reject. One of the important features of bullet proof, of bullet proofs is that it allows us to do uh, aggregation over uh, proofs. So let's say rather than generating a single proof for each commitment, let's say we have several commitments like N commitments. And here we have the vector of N underlying values. So the aggregation proof allows us to create a single proof that's much more efficient than N individual proofs. So this algorithm will take a vector of commitments and a vector of opening values, and it will produce a single proof. And also the verify algorithm will take the, that proof and it will either uh, accept it or reject it. So the efficiency of aggregate proof is much more um, efficient, is much more better than um, the efficiency of N uh, individual range proofs. Uh, another component that uh, we use on uh, in the design of periodic auction is proof of sort. So let's say we have a vector of n values like this, then we can say that this vector is sorted descendingly if and only if the differences between successive elements is 
positive or belongs to this interval. So we can also utilize the homomorphic property of Peterson commitment to produce a commitment to the difference as well. So the proof of sort, we have a two algorithm, prove and verify. And in the proof algorithm, we have uh, the input in the form of a vector of commitments and vector of opening values. And it will actually utilize the pilot proofs aggregation on the differences between successive elements and these uh, two vectors to produce the proof by. And uh, on the verify algorithm, it also utilizes the bullet proof to verify the, the commitments of the differences between uh, successive elements within this uh, X uh, vector. So I'm using uh, capital letters to denote uh, commitments and bold letters to denote our vectors. The third component uh, that we use as well in periodic auction design is a commitment encryption consistency protocol. So this is a three-party protocol where we have, uh, let's say Alice, she has created a commitment and sent it to Bob, and she revealed that commitment later at uh, some point of time to Bob by encrypting it with Bob's public key. Now, Alice wants to convince a third party, and here uh, we have as Carol, that she has correctly, correctly revealed the, the commitment. So here we have a commitment and an encryption, and we want to prove that the commitment for the underlying value X is consistent with the ciphertext for the underlying value X. So this is a Sigma protocol. We have a, a prove and verify algorithms. In the prove uh, algorithm, we take the commitment and ciphertext as public parameters, and, uh, as well as the public key of the uh, recipient, which is in this case, Bob, and the secret values or the witnesses are the opening values, X and R. And also we have a verify algorithm, which takes the public input X, C, and Y, and the proof, and it either accepts or rejects. So now we are going to talk about the periodic auction protocol. Here we have a high level description. So we have a single operator, a smart contract, and a set of traders. And also we have different phases. So the first phase is called bidding phase. And before that phase starts, we have the operator start the session. So the operator sent a transaction to the smart contract to inform it, to instruct it that we are going to start a new session. Once the smart contract is uh, initialized and the session has started, the bidding phase starts and traders can submit their orders to the smart contract. Once the bidding order uh, phase is closed, then the, refi the reveal phase comes in. And here, traders are going to reveal their orders, but they are not going to reveal it as plain text. Now, they are going to reveal it by sending an encryption of their orders. And these encryptions uh, are created using the public key of the operator. So only the operator can decrypt the revealed orders. But any other party or observer will not be able to determine what are the underlying values for these orders. Once the reveal phase is closed, then um, the operator can decrypt the uh, orders, the revealed orders, and can begin matching them to find the market clearing price and then generate a proof that this MCP was it was computed correctly and passed the MCP along with the proof to the smart contract, where the smart contract will verify the proof and accept the MCP if the proof was successfully verified. So the periodic auction starts with initializi initialization phase, where the operator generates key pair of Elgamal encryption, set up the public parameters for bulletproof, 
and define the time windows for each case. Then the operator will deploy a smart contract and initialize it with the uh, public uh, values or end parameters. Next is the um, submission of order or bidding phase where each trader can submit uh, the limit order. And for this, the trader are go is going to choose two different uh, random values, R and let's say R uh, this vector. And then the trader will compute the commitment for unit price and volume, so U and V. Then we want to ensure that these values are within a certain range for our protocol to work. So the trader is going to utilize the aggregation uh, feature of public proofs to produce a single proof for these two commitments, U and V. Then the trader will send the, the order, which consists of the unit commitment, unit price commitment, the volume commitment, the proof from wallet proof, and direction, where it specifies uh, whether this is a sell or buy order. The next phase, once the billing phase is closed, then uh, the revealing phase comes in, where each trader is going to reveal um, the details of his or her order to the operator. And doing so involves encrypting the underlying values, let's say U and V, the unit price and volume from the previous uh, limit order submitted in the submission phase, where they are encrypted using the public key of the operator, which is Y in this case. Then the trader will utilize Sigma protocol to prove that this ciphertext CU is consistent with the commitment for the unit price. And also the uh, ciphertext for the volume is consistent with the volume commitment. Finally, the trader is going to send the ciphertext U, uh, CU and CV along with the consistency proofs. So the smart contract will verify these proofs to ensure that the bidder or the seller is not sending a reveal, an incorrect reveal to the operator. And um, this is important in order to avoid a dispute phase between traders and operators, where the trader may claim that um, the operator did not uh, correctly open uh, the, the order for that trader. Or so this is just an important uh, step to ensure that the, there is no need for dispute between uh, traders and operator. Now the important phase, which is finding the market clearing price. So in here, the operator can read all the uh, ciphertext for the orders submitted on the smart contract and decrypt them. So the operator will have access to the underlying values. And then the operator is going to sort the bid uh, orders that's denoted as B descendingly based on the price. So highest uh, price first. And also the operator will sort the sell orders ascendingly. So the lowest price is sorted uh, first. And the output of these two functions is uh, positioning vectors. Let's, let's call them chi and gamma. And we will know in a bit uh, how to use them. So after sorting them, the operator draws a, a, a curves, a cumulative quantity against prices. And then uh, the operator finds the market clearing price and volume, let's say at this point. So after finding the market clearing price and volume, the operator is going to create a commitment for the price and the volume. And then uh, the trader will, uh, the operator will insert that order in uh, the list of uh, buy orders and the list of sell orders. Let's say at positions chi m and gamma m. Now we have two, uh, two lists or two vectors, b and s and they are sorted. So um, the next step for the operator is to generate proofs of sort on the price 
commitments in B and S, and also prove sort all the cumulative quantities. So here we have uh, cumulative quantities are increasing, and also the cumulative quantity for bits are in increasing order. So only the um, price commitments in, in, in B and in, in bets are sorted descendingly, but all other um, commitments like the cell uh, price or the cumulative quantities are sorted ascendingly. Then the operator is going to send the market clearing price, market clearing volume, the positioning vectors, chi and y and gamma, and also the positions of the market clearing price uh, commitment or that order, uh, let's say chi m, which is uh, the position in the, the buy orders, and gamma m, which is the position for the market clearing price order and the sell orders. And here we have four proofs, and they are aggregate proofs over the commitments of price and uh, buy orders and the commitments of prices on sell orders and the uh, commitments of cumulative quantities. So the cumulative quantities, we can compute commitments for them by utilizing the homomorphic property of Peterson commitments. Next, the smart contract is going to um, take the parameters from the transaction sent by the operator, and it will position, reorder the elements or orders in B and S according to the positioning vectors chi and gamma, then the, market, the smart contract will create commitments for the market clearing price, the market clearing volume, and insert that order at positions chi m and gamma m in B and S. So at this step, B and S are sorted accordingly to the uh, sort that was uh, um, created by the operator. Now, the smart contract is going to compute cumulative quantities uh, by utilizing the homomorphic property of Peterson commitment. So if we multiply two commitments together, we get the commitment for the addition. And this is what we need here for computing the cumulative quantities. And after that, the smart contract is going to verify the four proofs here, the two proofs for unit prices in B and S, and the, cumul the cumulative quantities in B and S as well. Once the, proof, uh, the proofs have been uh, successfully verified, then the smart contract marks all bids and offers above chi m and gamma m as match, so, because chi m is the market clearing price and the bid orders, and gamma m is the market clearing price and the sell orders. So all orders above the market clearing price order are matched. Let's say in this example, we have all orders before the market clearing price order are matched. And now the operator can settle these matched orders based on the market clearing price. So here are different um, curves depending on how the uh, order book uh, is uh, on the order book state. So um, in, in this prototype, I've uh, designed a protocol for the simplest case here, which is where we have an equal cumulative quantity and the uh, market clearing price is the average between the bed price and uh, sell price. But we can also utilize the same uh, cryptographic primitives to design uh, like cases for each different um, scenario we have here. For the performance of this protocol, let's say we have n as the bed width or the range of our commitments and m as the number of commitments in aggregate proof. So we have two operations, two main uh, sub uh, protocols, which is proof of sort and sigma protocol for uh, commitment encryption consistency. And the uh, sigma protocol, we have constant values because it doesn't depend 
either on n or m. But the proof sort, we have logarithmic algorithm, and this is the um, main complexity of bullet proofs. So um, it, it, it depends on the range, bit widths, and the number of commitments. Here we have uh, estimated the proof size for our three main transactions, which is submit order, where we utilize bulletproof for two commitments, the unit price and the volume, reveal order, where we submit a cipher text encrypting the uh, underlying values for the commitments, and also we utilize Sigma protocol. And finally, the clear market, where we have four aggregate proofs and uh, positioning vectors uh, and as well the market clearing price and market clearing volume. So the first two transactions, they are constant. They don't um, depend on the number of orders, but the market clearing price sc uh, scales with the number of orders. So in terms of bytes of proof size, we have the market, uh, the clear market transaction in, in the range of uh, 10,000 byte or 10 kilobyte. Whether uh, while the uh, submit order, which utilizes bulletproof for two uh, elements, is around 1,000 kilobyte, uh, one kilobyte, sorry, and the uh, reveal order, which utilizes the Sigma protocol, is is very low because, as as we have seen here, we have like uh, three elements and the in the group and two uh, two uh, integers. The verification gas cost for uh, evaluating this prototype on Ethereum for a number of 100 orders, the clear market is actually very high. It's, it's around um, uh, 1 million gas or, or even more than that. But um, similarly, the submit order and review order, they are constant regardless of the number of orders. And finally, the prover time it scales with the number of orders, and we still we have a constant uh, prover time for the uh, submit order and review order. So, the conclusion for our work: um, periodic auctions are becoming more popular among institutional investors because they share a similar property with the dark pools yet they have a better price discovery. And we designed a prototype for our protocol and it seems that we can um, have a feasible performance for a number of orders around 50. And of course, the, the performance of this prototype scales with the efficiency of range proof. So if we have uh, an, uh, a range proof that's more efficient than the poly proof, then our prototype will gain um, mean more, more performance. For our future work, we are going to investigate designing a full privacy preserving auction on the same, where uh, the operator is not um, having any uh, clear idea about the values of the um, orders. And here um, we want to ensure that even um, after the uh, auction is closed, then the values for the unmatched orders are still um, pr uh, privacy preserved, even against the operator himself. So with this, I conclude my talk. I hope you enjoyed it and um, see you in the workshop and be ready for your questions. Thank you.